Welcome back to Football Daily for today's top 10. We're halfway through this year's edition of the Africa Cup of Nations, so what better time to bring you 10 African stars that deserve more respect? 10. Esam El Hadari Esam El Hadari had been a professional for 25 years before his name made headlines around the world at the 2018 World Cup in Russia. The Egyptian is nothing short of a legend in his homeland having made over 700 appearances at club level, as well as racking up an incredible 159 caps in a 22-year international career. Growing up playing the sport against his parents' wishes, El Hadari made his name with El Ahli, where he would win 26 trophies in 12 years, including eight Egyptian Premier Leagues and four CAF Champions League titles. Whilst he'd become a bit of a journeyman in the 2010s, he would maintain his place in the national squad throughout. With the Pharaohs, El Hadari won four AFCON trophies, starting and keeping a clean sheet in the final of their 2006, 2008 and 2010 triumphs, claiming goalkeeper of the tournament in all three. In 2018, at the age of 45, he would become the oldest ever player to play in a World Cup, even saving a penalty against Saudi Arabia. Egypt would be eliminated and El Hadari retired soon after, but it's hard to see anyone breaking that record anytime soon. 9. Lucas Radaby Aged 20 in 1989, Lucas Radaby was picked up by Kaiser Chiefs, one of South African's football's preeminent forces. At this time in his life, Radaby was actually a goalkeeper, making a switch to midfield soon after before finally settling as a centre-back. By the early 1990s, Radaby was already an integral part of the Amakosi side, and he'd moved to Leeds United in 1994 after over a century of appearances with the Chiefs. However, the Sawito local wasn't Howard Wilson's main target at Ellen Road. He was signed to keep fellow South African player Phil Mazinga happy, but two years later, and only Radaby remained in Yorkshire. In all, Radaby would make over 250 appearances for the Whites, turning down the likes of Manchester United, AC Milan and Roma to remain in Yorkshire. A true South African icon, Radaby made 70 appearances for the Bafana Bafana, winning the 1996 AFCON and captaining them both to the 1998 and 2002 World Cups, although ultimately injury would get the better of him and force his retirement in 2005. Nelson Mandela even referred to Radaby as his hero, Praise doesn't get much bigger than that. 8. Portia Modise When it comes to women's football in Africa, Nigeria might be the most successful side, having won 11 of the 13 AFCONs held. But South Africa are able to boast 9 centurions in their history, compared to the Super Falcons' one. And one of those players is the highest scoring female in continental history. Portia Modise made her debut for the Banyana Banyana in 2000 as a 17-year-old at the year's AFCON as South Africa finished as runners-up. In 2005, aged just 22, Modise was nominated for the Women's FIFA World Player of the Year and was named as captain for her country. Despite missing out on international football between 2008 and 2012, after falling out with the then head coach, Modise had already amassed 71 goals in 92 matches. She reached 100 caps at the 2012 AFCON tournament, where South Africa finished as runners-up for the fourth time, but almost missed the 2014 edition altogether, as she wasn't on the new coach's radar as she had started playing for a men's team. Fortunately, she was rediscovered, and Modise scored goal number 100 in October 2014, the first African to reach that milestone, ultimately retiring with 101 goals in 124 appearances a year later. 7. Mikel John Obi now, it's not like Mikel John Obi is an unknown footballer. After all, he spent 12 seasons in English football, the majority of them with Chelsea, where he won two Premier League titles, three FA Cups, a Champions League and a Europa League. But his impact on Nigerian football is hugely understated. Highly sought after as a teenager, moving to Chelsea following a controversial transfer saga, Mikel became a key part of the side between 2006 and 2016. However, he never received the plaudits for his performances in defensive midfield that he would do on the international stage, where he was considered amongst the continent's best, orchestrating the Super Eagles' attack from an advanced position. In 2013, he would captain Nigeria to the AFCON title and finish second to Yaya Toure in the African Player of the Year award. Not bad considering he only contributed one goal and one assist in all of 2013 at Chelsea. He also captained Nigeria's 2016 Olympic side to the bronze medal on his way to 91 caps, the third most for his nation at the time of his international retirement in 2019. Nothing short of a legend. 
6. Rashid Mekloufi and Lakhdar Baloumi We're doubling up for this one as it was hard to pick one of these Algerian football greats over the other. Starting with Rashid Mekloufi, the diminutive striker scored 157 goals in 361 games at the highest level in France, most of them for Saint-Étienne, becoming a four-time Ligue 1 champion. The peak of his powers coincided with the Algerian War, and Mekloufi fled to France in 1958, instantly becoming a national icon, and paving the way for the likes of Lakhdar Baloumi, who made his professional debut in 1974. Widely considered the best Algerian footballer of all time, he was close to joining Maradona at Barcelona in 1982, when he was 24, but couldn't as the law prevented citizens leaving the country until they were 27. Baloumi and Mekloufi joined forces that year, with Mekloufi managing the national team at the World Cup, where the Desert Foxes beat eventual runners-up West Germany 2-1 in the groups, Baloumi scoring the winner. In 1985, he'd agreed a move to Juventus, but a broken leg suffered shortly after saw it fall through. Belloumi reached 100 appearances for Algeria, and it's a shame he never quite got that big move to Europe. 5. Rigobert Song Perhaps best known for three ill-fated years in England, this does not do justice for what has been a long and storied career for Rigobert Song. Whilst his introduction to the Premier League came with Liverpool in 1999, the defender had already featured in two World Cups, and when he made his debut for Cameroon in the 1994 edition, was the third youngest player to have ever featured in the tournament at just 17 years old. His domestic career also took him to West Ham, as well as Italy, Germany, France and Turkey, but it was on the international stage that Song truly impressed. In a 17-year career with the Indomitable Lions, he'd rack up 137 appearances, more than any other West African has ever managed on the global scene. Song played at eight continental tournaments, captained Cameroon at five of them, and played in 35 consecutive games, all of which are AFCON records, and lifted the trophy for his country in both 2000 and 2002. Hospitalized due to a stroke in 2016, Song fully recovered and now manages Cameroon's under-23s, passing on his invaluable experience to the next generation. 4. Kalusha Boalia Considered the best Zambian footballer ever, Kalusha Boalia made his name in the Netherlands as a regular for PSV, winning two Eredivisie titles in the 1990s. He also impressed on the international stage, putting Zambia on the map when he netted a hat-trick in a 4-0 thrashing of Italy at the 1988 Olympics, winning African Football of the Year too. Boalia captained a national side that many believed could become the best in Africa, eyeing AFCON's success in 1994 and their first World Cup qualification that same year. However, tragedy struck as in 1993, a plane carrying most of the Chipolo Polo squad crashed, killing all 24 on board. Boalia wasn't on that flight, but it was left to him to spearhead the nation's revival. Although they finished as runners-up at AFCON and didn't qualify for USA 94, they still returned as heroes. Boalia was nominated for FIFA Player of the Year in 1996, the first nominee not to have played in Europe. He'd also managed Zambia in the 2000s, even bringing himself on at the age of 41, where he'd score a free kick to round off his international career, with 39 goals in 87 appearances. 3. Thomas Nkono for almost two decades, Thomas Nkono was locked in a battle for the Cameroon goalkeeper's jersey with Joseph Antoine Bell. The pair making 133 international appearances between them, from Nkono's debut in 1975 to both of their retirements in 1994. However, the 63 times captain Kono gets the nod here, as he did during the 1982 and 1990 World Cups. That might have been thanks to the fact that Nkono made the move to Europe first, signing for Espanyol in 1982, the same year he was named as African footballer for the second time, the first being in 1979. Whilst in Spain, Nkono barely missed a match, making 333 appearances in just eight years with the club. His defining moment came in 1990, as part of the Cameroon side that reached the World Cup quarter-finals, beating Argentina, Romania and Colombia before losing to England after extra time, and were seen as one of the most exciting teams of the tournament. A young Gianluigi Buffon changed positions from midfielder to goalkeeper after being inspired by Encono's performances, with the legendary goalkeeper even naming one of his children after his idol, widely regarded as the best shot stopper in African history. 2. Frederick Canute The only European-born footballer on this list, 
Freddy Canute qualifies thanks to a change in FIFA rules back in 2004. Despite being a France under-21 international and impressing for Lyon and West Ham, he was overlooked for a call-up for Le Blues. So when players became able to represent the country of their parents' birth, he switched to Mali. 26-year-old Canute made an instant impact for the Eagles, ending as joint top scorer at AFCON 2004 with four goals, helping his new nation to fourth in only their third qualification since 1972. Before his international retirement in 2010, the former Spurs and Sevilla striker scored 23 times in 38 appearances, their top scorer of all time before Siedu Keita topped it in 2013, albeit in a Mali career three times as long. He helped develop Mali from a nation ranked 117th before his arrival to almost cracking the top 30 for the first time in 2007, the same year he won African Footballer of the Year. Away from football, Canute established a children's village in Mali and bought a mosque with $700,000 of his own money to prevent its demolition, an inspiration to many both on and off the pitch. 1. Salif Keita A true pioneer for both nation and continent throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Salif Keita left his mark across Europe. Moving to France as a 21-year-old, he'd score 125 goals in 149 matches for Saint Etienne between 1967 and 1972, winning Ligue 1 three times before averaging a goal every other game for Marseille too. Leaving Marseille when they tried to force French nationality upon him, he moved to Valencia, scoring 23 times in 74 matches before 32 goals in 63 games for Portugal Sporting totaling 190 goals in 300 appearances during his time in Europe. Cater would eventually retire after a stint in America in 1980, calling time on a 17-year career. Cater made his debut for Mali in 1963 as a 16-year-old and helped the Eagles finish as runners-up in the 1972 Cup of Nations, scoring 13 times in 28 matches in an intermittent international career. Post-retirement in 1994, Keita set up the first professional training centre for Malian footballers, helping lay the foundations for future generations, including his nephew Seydou Keita, a legacy that epitomises his influence on the global stage. So those were our 10 African superstars who deserve more respect, but have we missed anyone else out? Please let me know in the comments below and we'll try and get back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, then click on screen right now for some more football daily content. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.